And this is where it gets real fun. Okay, what have we just established, right? In case it wasn't fun already. Addition and subtraction, addition and subtraction. Essentially, you are going to get, and um, on your diagram, you've sort of already got this, right? Um, if you've got, on the complex plane, uh, one complex number over here and then another complex number over here, to add them means to sort of do one after the other. So I would end up somewhere, I guess, over here. You can sort of picture that uh, imaginary parallelogram, right? In fact, imaginary is exactly the right word for it. So that's what addition and subtraction does. Multiplication by a real number. Multiplication by some real number like three or two and a half or one or whatever it is that I've got there, right? What we're suggesting was it's an idea of scale, right? So if I've got some complex number like so, if I multiply it by some real number that's bigger than one, you're going to end up like we showed over here, like so. There's a scaling factor going on. Or, of course, I could multiply something between 0 and 1, or I could even go in the opposite direction if I multiply by a negative. Now, that's multiplication by a real number. You already know, because we covered it at the end of last lesson. You have a bit of an introduction. What happens if we multiply not by a real number, but by an imaginary number, like say i. What effect did that have on the successes z1, z2, z3? What did we use? What geometric word can you use to describe what's going on? It's, it's anti-clockwise rotation around the origin. Do you remember that, right? Let me say that again. In fact, it's so important, I'll write it. Multiplication by an imaginary number gives us anti-clockwise Rotation, uh, and it's not just anywhere, like it's not like if I took this whiteboard marker and then I just spun it on the spot, right? I'm actually spinning it about the origin. Do you guys remember back in year seven, um, rotation requires a point about which you rotate, and the point about which we're rotating is the origin. So we got numbers like, uh, like this, or this, or this. So this is what happens when we multiply by a real number or when we multiply by an imaginary number. But this topic is not called real numbers or imaginary numbers. This topic is called complex numbers, which means we want to see what happens when we combine these, right? So here's what I'd like you to do. You will shortly need a new complex plane for this, okay? What I'd like you to do is think of a complex number, any complex number you like. But probably to make things nice for yourself, maybe choose some integer coefficients for the real and imaginary components, okay? And importantly, this is really, really important, when you think of your own complex number, please think of a different one to the people on either side of you. I want, in fact, everyone in the room to have a different complex number. Choose one, write it down. Um, It'd be great if between you and the people around you, you had some positives and some negatives as well. I've intentionally chosen just positive stuff here, just so it's a bit easier to visualize. Um, but choose some stuff in the second quadrant, or the third, or the fourth. Come up with a complex number. I'll give you 10 seconds to do that and write it down. Just think of one, look at the person next to you, make sure you haven't come up with the same number. And then, here's what I'd like you to do. Um, all of you, together. We know what happens when you do these in isolation, but if we do them simultaneously, I want you all to multiply your chosen complex number. I'm just gonna call it Z, because I'm original like that. Maybe Z1, because it's a specific complex number. Go ahead and multiply it by two plus two I. I've chosen that number specifically. Two plus two I. Do it with arithmetic, and then I'd like you to plot both of these numbers, your number that you chose and the result that you get when you multiply through by 2 plus 2i. Plot those both onto an argand diagram for me, okay? Do it nice and neatly. Your scale is actually going to be very important here, so be accurate. If you're a grid book, you have a bit of an advantage there, but once you've done that, you've got a result, go ahead and compare to the person next to you as well and see what you can observe. Off you go. I will admit, I kind of threw you a little bit in the deep end by letting you choose whatever number you wanted. But you know what? You're, you're the extension 2 class. I reckon you can handle being thrown in the deep end. I am, however, as I've done in the past, right, I'm going to ask um, one of you in particular because uh, you chose an interesting number that we're all going to do together. So underneath where you've done yours, I'd like you to follow with me 
Smart's example, okay? And then we're gonna have a look at this one in a second too. Smart, you chose as your original complex number, what? 2i, all right, so I'm gonna place, and I'd love you to place as well, 2i here on the imaginary axis. I should neaten this up. You should always, yeah, draw a new one for it. Well, I mean, if your complex numbers are sufficiently far away from where Smart's put his, maybe you can fit it on the same one, but otherwise, draw a new one, it's fine. Um, by the way, it is always important, and I've been a bit slack on this, that you do state, like this is a complex plane, so I've got real and imaginary axis, it's not x and a y, which are two real numbers, and so on. Okay, so I've got 2i here. Right. Now, when you go ahead and you multiply this by 2 plus 2i, maybe, maybe Smart just did it because the arithmetic is nice and easy. Do you want to go ahead and tell us what the answer is? Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. 4i minus 4. Are you happy with that? Uh, minus 4 plus 4i. There's 4i. 4i, right? Then when I do this part, it'll be minus 4... Hold on, think about this, right? This is plus 4i squared, right? Right? Careful, it's just simple arithmetic, but... 2 times 2 gives you 4, i times i gives you i squared, but we know that by definition i squared is negative 1. So he's actually done an extra line of working, that's fine. Okay. So 4i minus 4, we tend to write the number in a different order, even though we generally like, in real numbers, we like subtraction to come next. We've so far been writing it in what order? Real part first, which in this case is negative 4, and then the imaginary part, like so. Okay, um, that helps us as well, especially with doing this stuff on the complex plane, because you can think of them as sort of an x-coordinate and a y-coordinate. So go ahead and let's put this onto our diagram. Okay, now Hopefully, as you stare at your diagram and stare at this one, if you have not already, this interval that we draw from our complex number to the origin is going to clarify what change is happening, right? So go ahead and put both of those on. For every single one of us, and for this one here and the one on screen, right? What's going on is that there's a combination of these two things happening. Because we're multiplying by a real number and by an imaginary number. And so therefore, is there a change in scale to the original number we supplied? Answer, yes. Because I chose what we were all multiplying by, all of the complex numbers that you ended up with were further away from the origin than you started with, right? That's the first thing, so scale is happening. There's also rotation happening. Now I've chosen um, Smart's number particularly because the actual kind of rotation is particularly obvious. Have a look here with me, right? This uh, triangle that I'm just sort of putting onto here, right? Here, here, and here. It's not just any triangle, it's not a random triangle. What kind of triangle is it? It's right angle is the first thing I heard. What else can you tell me about it? It's also isosceles because it's negative four plus four i, yes? So this side and this side are the same. As a consequence, you can tell me what all the angles in this triangle are, being that it's right angled and isosceles. Um, we're going to have, we've already got radians, don't we? Yes, we've got radians. Okay, so we've got pi on 2 over here in the corner. What have we got for our other ang angles? Pi on 4, because everything has to add up to pi. Right? Pi on 4, pi on 4. What this tells us is that this angle in here, the one between your complex number and the new one we got when multiplying, it had an anti-clockwise rotation. It was about the origin, but it wasn't the right angle that you saw in the first instance last week, right? In this case, it's pi on four. Have a look at your diagram. If you did it accurately, you should be getting this exact same thing. There's a scale, and there's also this rotation of pi on four. How come? Now to answer the how come, we're really close to just sort of letting you go on your exercise now, but I need a bit more space. We need to get a better handle on what kind of scale is going on. We know that there is lengthening happening, enlargement, I guess, to use that word. But um, how much bigger is it? How much further away is your new complex number from the origin compared to 
the new one, right? Or the old one from the new one, right? What's the difference, in other words, in the scale factor from here to here? How would we work that out? How would we work out how much we've scaled by? Like if I didn't say to you, and I think I just heard half the answer, if I didn't say to you, here's the number, it's three. So you end up three times further away. Someone want to help me out working out how do I calculate that scale factor? Pi, sorry, say it again? Pythagoras, okay, so I've got, I've just got this right angle triangle here we identified before. Um, I know what the two shorter sides are, they're four and four. So therefore, what's the long side? It's the square root of four squared plus four squared, right? We're extension two, we can do Pythagoras' theorem. Yes, okay, last I checked, that was the square root of 16 plus 16, 32. Can you write that any simpler? Please tell me you can write that simpler. The square root of 32, what, what factor can you pull out? You can take out uh, 16, or I should say the square root of 16, right? So that means you're going to have uh, 4 root 2 as the distance outside there. Happy? What about this distance? That's just 2, right? Because by definition, you've gone 2 units upwards. So how much further away is that? What factor is it? It's, yeah, it's, it's two, root two, two root two times further away. Do you agree? Here, we were three times further away because we multiplied by three. Where's this come from? And for that matter, where, where did this come from? This pi on four. Pi on four and two root two. What do they have to do with, well, this is the number I supplied you, right? Okay. Last thing to put onto your complex plane, I promise. 2 plus 2i. Can you fit it onto this argand diagram? I think it should be on my diagram anyway. It's going to be about here. 2 plus 2i? That's where I place it. Okay. Can anyone tell me what is the significance of pi on 4, the angle, and 2 root 2, the distance, what is the significance of these to this? Can you see it? I would say the angle's easier to spot than the length, but go ahead. I'll be happy to start on either. Yeah, do you go ahead? Try one. Which one do you want to do? Do you want to tell me about the angle or the length? Yeah? Okay, tell me about the length. Two root two. Two root two is the length of the vector representing two plus two i. Okay, so interesting answer. So you're introducing some language which, um, as a student who did not take physics in year 11 or 12, I'm going to hold off on for a second. The word vector, we will come to, believe me, we will come to that in this course shortly. But for now, I think what you're referring to is, is this length here, right? This is the thing we're talking about. And that length there, you can go ahead and work it out by Pythagoras just like we worked out this one. It's going to be 2 root 2. Is that okay? 2 root 2 is the length from the origin to here. Look at pi on 4. Pi on 4. Where is that? Yeah, go ahead. Cause of pi on 4? Or sine of pi on 4? Is that what I heard you say? Yeah. So I really love that your brain went here, right? Because it's true. There's like the square roots of two and this pi on four business should make your like trigonometry sense tingle, right? Because both of these are one on root two, okay? I'm gonna shelve that idea for a second because it actually is gonna take me some work to illustrate. There is a connection by the way, that's not accidental. Let me see if I can get to you to where this is, right? Remember we drew this right angle triangle over here before and we noticed the angles inside it? Well, there's a right angle triangle that goes with this guy too, right? It's here. See that one right there? Do you see where pi on 4 is here? That's the angle that I'm interested in. It's the angle from the real axis, and then I rotate, sorry I rubbed it off, anti-clockwise, you come to here. And where's 2 root 2? It's, it's this length here. Now, this is actually something which in the syllabus comes a little bit later, along with some of the other language that we're referring to, right? But you're doing these operations, and we really badly, Mrs. Lee's and I, want you to know visually what does any of this mean. I'd love you to, after, 
after you have a go at the exercise we're about to set you, right? Go back to 1A. Go back to the exercise we did, we worked on all of last week. You did a whole bunch of addition and subtraction and multiplication, even division, which we haven't quite touched this lesson. What does it all mean visually? Well, now we have a sense, sort of, for what multiplication does. It rotates and it also scales, right? And we're going to knuckle down into, we need some more tools to understand what's going on here to get some more precision, but we want you to see what was happening, okay?